The top stories tonight in Y News. Davao del Norte First District Representative Pantalion Alvarez insists that his call to the armed forces of the Philippines or AFP to withdraw support for President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. cannot be considered seditious. President Marcos vows to sustain the current anti-illegal drug campaign under his administration following the successful interception of illegal drug shipments worth a staggering 13.3 billion pesos in Alitagtag, Batangas yesterday. The Department of Migrant Workers, or DMW, expects the release of four Filipino seafarers of the container ship MSC Ares who were detained by Iranian forces. And we will discover why the Federal Bureau of Investigation, or FBI, launches the open criminal investigation to identify the cause of the Baltimore Bridge collapse. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Tuesday, the 16th of April, 2024. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UN TV news and rescue social media channels. I am Harin Delgado. First in the news. Davao del Norte First District Representative Pantaleon Alvarez stated that his call for the military to withdraw support from President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. is not seditious. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives will launch an investigation on the alleged secret deal of former President Rodrigo Duterte with China on the West Philippine Sea. Rosa Licoz will tell us why. Davao del Norte First District Representative Pantaleon Alvarez has insisted that his call to the Armed Forces of the Philippines or AFP to withdraw support for President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. due to administration policies allegedly escalating tensions in the West Philippine Sea cannot be considered seditious or disorderly conduct. He made a statement after being warned by fellow lawmakers about the possibility of facing investigation by the House Committee on Ethics. Some House solids also suggested that Representative Alvarez's statements could be deemed seditious. However, according to Alvarez, his statement is covered by the constitutionally protected rights of freedom of expression and peaceful assembly. Leaders in the House of Representatives condemned Alvarez's statement and called on the relevant government agencies to immediately file legal cases against the Davao del Norte representative to hold him accountable and prevent any attempts to destabilize the government. Meanwhile, the leadership of the House of Representatives will respond to the call of some House lawmakers to investigate the alleged gentleman's agreement between former President Rodrigo Duterte and China regarding the West Philippine Sea. According to House Majority Leader Manuel Jose Dalipe, the House will act on the request of Assistant Majority Leader Jay Kong Hoon to scrutinize the said gentleman's agreement because of the possibility of betrayal of the country by the former chief executive. This will be conducted during the resumption of the session scheduled on April 29. Apart from Representative Kong Hoon, the Makabayan Bloc lawmaker and House Deputy Minority Leader Franz Castro also filed a separate resolution concerning the alleged secret deal between former President Duterte and Chinese President Xi Jinping. Furthermore, the LIPE added that other House leaders also agreed with the calls due to the implications of any agreement on the Philippine sovereign rights. However, Mandaluyong City Representative Neptali Gonzalez II, chairman of the House Special Committee on the West Philippine Sea, admitted that it is difficult to determine who will be summoned for the hearing, especially since there are no official documents regarding the said agreement. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. A lawmaker believes that the so-called gentleman's agreement between former President Rodrigo Duterte and China is a propaganda by the Chinese government. This report will tell us why. Amid calls to investigate the alleged gentleman's agreement between former President Rodrigo Duterte and China, Senate Majority Leader Joel Villanueva believes the supposed deal is a part of China's propaganda. The lawmaker believes that this is one of China's strategies to divide Filipinos on the West Philippine Sea issue. I really believe so that it's just a 
plain, simple propaganda of uh, the Chinese government. Ako, wala akong, uh, wala akong kaduda-duda that this is part of their plan. This is part of their strategy. So, let's not fall into their traps. No one believes it is binding. I mean, all of us know that it's void. Granting without admitting that there's indeed a gentleman's agreement. Do you think China is that ridiculous? And uh, I, I'm sorry to say this because somehow they're playing dumb na kunyari, i-implement ito. Alam naman nila hindi may implement ito. There is no, there, there is no shred of uh, document. Clearly, they want us na mag-away-away. They want us na ma-divide tayo and it should not uh, uh, be the case. We are somehow falling into the trap of this uh, uh, bullying nation. Mm -hmm. Lahat nagsasalita na, I mean, lahat biglang naging eksperto, no? He calls on Filipinos, even his colleagues, to unite and for the government to come up with a master plan in dealing with the issue. No, kayo na rin nagsabi, hindi lang sa social media, hindi lang, uh, you know, bloggers left and right, even politicians, even those who have influence and power in uh, governing this nation ay kasama sa mga na-o-operate, whether knowingly or wittingly or unwittingly. I'm begging and appealing to all concerned stakeholders, let us put our acts together and be Filipinos for one time lang. Magkaisa po tayo dahil uh, dambuhala itong kalaban natin. Ang nakakaingit sa kanila is lahat. If you do this, may strategy na sila. If you take this path, may strategy na sila. So, uh, I pray na meron na rin tayong ganun. Villanueva adds he will request Senate President Juan Miguel Big Zubiri to discuss first in a meeting with all the senators whether to conduct a public hearing or an executive session on the matter as they resume session on April 29. This as he noted that some of his colleagues have expressed concern on investigating the issue in the upper chamber. Senate Deputy Minority Leader Risa Hontiveros earlier filed a resolution seeking a Senate inquiry into the alleged agreement, calling it treasonous if proven true. It's a valid concern uh, by, by Senator uh, Risa, but there are also issues uh, uh, with other senators. Ang appeal ko talaga is uh, look into this, no? It's a, uh, a part of national security. Uh, habang nagsasalita tayo ngayon sa uh, harap ng uh, camera, alam natin na may mga nakikinig po dyan. alam natin na ang bawat galaw ng pamahalaan eh, Pinapinagmamatsyagan. Horin Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. A government official assures that the normalization process will continue even after the first parliamentary election in the Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao or BARM in May 2025. Dante Amento tells us why. The Office of the Presidential Advisor on Peace, Reconciliation and Unity has clarified that though the Bangsamoro Transition Authority or BTA task to pass legislations and implement plans would be dissolved after the first BARM parliamentary elections on May 12, 2025, the peace process as part of the security aspect of the normalization in the Bangsamoro region would not end after the new Bangsamoro leaders would be elected in the parliamentary. Kung sino man po ang manalo doon sa, ano, sa farm election, tuloy-tuloy po yung Bangsamoro Peace Process. Secretary Carlito Galvez Jr. said that the commissioning and reintegration of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front or MILF combatants would still continue. This is the commitment of the government. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. allegedly wanted a warm parliamentary election to push through to have accountability on the members of the Bangsamoro Parliamentary. Uh, ang ano po ng uh, ating mahal presidente, ay magkaroon po ng election para magkaroon po talaga tayo ng full legitimacy ng barn at the same time meron po tayong accountability. Galvez further said that the government is eyeing to implement the socio-economic aspect of the normalization with the help of the agriculture department to have comprehensive agriculture programs. Ngayon pong uh, 2020, 2024, 2025, uh, we will make it a banner year for barn kasi talagang Lahat po ng mga socio-economic projects, especially po yung agriculture, kasi 70% agriculture po tayo, ay uh, ipapa-implement po ng uh, ating uh, mahal na presidente. Meanwhile, the Commission on Elections or COMELEC also clarified that for their part, the first parliamentary election in BARM will push through 
come May of 2025. As far as the COMEDEC is concerned, mahirap ipiresume na hindi matutuloy. Sa part ng COMEDEC, pinagahandaan namin. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Several senators criticized the recent call of former House Speaker and now Davo Darnote 1st District Representative Pantaleon Alvarez to the military to withdraw their support for President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. Senator Jungoy Estrada, who chairs the Senate Committee on National Defense, says the appeal is uncalled for, saying that Marcos is handling the West Philippine Sea issue very well. For me, that is uncalled for. Eh, wala naman ang magagawa pag kasabi ng China, paulit-ulit lang sila pinupulit tayo. Eh. We have to give attention to our allies already. For his part, Senate Minority Leader Aquilino Coco Pimentel appeals to Alvarez to leave out the armed forces of the Philippines from political matters but to continue to speak out on pressing issues. He also advises House Deputy Speaker Johnny Pimentel not to file criminal cases against Alvarez to uphold and strengthen the right to free speech. The Surigao del Sur representative earlier condemned the call of his fellow Mindanaoan, calling the remarks as tantamount to an act of sedition or rebellion. Meanwhile, Senate Majority Leader Joel Villanueva says he is confident with the military's loyalty to the Filipino people. Uh, yung definition ng sedition kasi may, may public uh, uh, uprising, tumultuous uprising. So wala naman. So hindi mo mafailan yun no, ng sedition. But doon naman sa inciting uh, to sedition, uh -huh. baka doon merong, uh, may, may bearing yung uh, sinasabi na yun. No? I am giving benefit of the doubt to uh, Congressman Alvarez. He's a good friend of mine. Uh, AFP is a professional organization and yung uh, loyalty nila syempre mm -hmm. sa taong bayan. So I, I, I believe in our military, I believe in our government. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. vows to sustain the current anti-illegal drug campaign under his administration following the successful interception of illegal drug shipments worth a staggering 13.3 billion pesos in the town of Alitagtag, Batangas yesterday morning. According to President Marcos Jr., due to the success of the operation, there was no need to alter the government's anti-drug campaign. He also proudly announced that no casualties were reported during the said operation. Meanwhile, PBBM firmly believes that the intercepted shipments of Shabu were not intended for the Philippines. Bala kayo sa ginagawa niyo, basta tuloy-tuloy <laughs> lang kami. Aabutan din namin kayo. Maliit lang ang Pilipinas. <laughs> no, quite the contrary. Why will we change? Look at the success that we have uh, gained. As I said, not only this 1.8 tons, the many, many tons that we have already seized. So it's, it's much more than it has been in the past. Uh, so it is the most successful approach to the drug war so far. Walang namatay, walang nagputukan, walang nasaktan. Basta't inoperate operate natin ng dahan-dahan, yun naman dapat ang approach. Para sa akin, yun dapat ang approach sa drug war. And for the news abroad. An open criminal investigation on the Baltimore Ridge collapsing has been launched by the Federal Bureau of Investigation or FBI following the raid of the Dali cargo ship. Paul Gachalian tells us why. The Federal Bureau of Investigation or FBI has launched the investigation to identify the cause of the Baltimore Bridge collapse looking at least in part whether the Dali crew left knowing the vessel has system problems. The investigation launched will mainly focus on the moments leading up to the collapse of the bridge when it was struck by the ship to identify if federal laws were abided by. Legal action has been launched by the city, which is working with two law firms to hold the wrongdoers responsible. The mayor of Baltimore, Brandon Scott, announced mentioning Dali crew members and other potential liable third parties. The Synergy Marine Group managing the Dali has not commented on the incident out of respect for the investigation but has assured they are participating in all government agencies investigating the case. Meanwhile, the black box which records information regarding the boat's operation has been obtained and will be used to get data on the ship's position 
speed, heading, radar, and other communications during the bridge's collapse. Paul Gachalian, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. United States President Joe Biden and his wife Jill Biden both revealed their 2023 tax returns, indicating a 7% increase in their income to nearly 620,000 US dollars. Biden unveiled these figures on the deadline day for US tax filings, coinciding with his bid for re election in 2024. It was also revealed that the couple paid 23.7% of their earnings in federal taxes. The majority of the Biden's income, approximately four-fifths, came from their respective roles as U.S. president and a teacher at Northern Virginia Community College. Supplementary earnings came from investments, pensions, and royalties from a book-related entity. The president's tax contribution also remained consistent with the previous year. Furthermore, the tax return highlighted Biden's charitable donations, totaling $20,477, benefiting various organizations including churches, the Epilepsy Foundation, and the Fraternal Order of Police. Vice President Kamala Harris and her husband Douglas Amoff also released their tax return, revealing an income of $450,380 for 2023 with federal taxes amounting to 88,570 US dollars. Meanwhile, Biden's Republican opponent Donald Trump has opted not to disclose his tax returns. We'll share more global stories with you later, but for now back to you Harleen. Thank you Marielle. For those watching our live streaming on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. The four Filipino crew members of the container ship MSC Ares who were detained by Iranian forces have already spoken with their families in the Philippines. The Department of Migrant Workers, or DMW, has expected that these crew members will be released soon. Meanwhile, the department will recommend to the International Bargaining Forum to classify the Strait of Hormuz as a warlike zone or high-risk area. Ryan Lakalale details why. The four Filipinos who are among the 25 crew members of the Portuguese container ship MSC Aris that was detained by the Iranian government last Saturday, April 13, are in safe and stable condition. They have also been able to communicate with their families here in the Philippines. The recent uh, update is uh, as of midnight last night, uh, they managed, the four families of the seafarers managed to directly communicate via video call with their loved ones on board. They are eating well and are still on duty on the ship. The four seafarers said they are fine, they are safe and uh, they uh, also uh, have uh, been told by uh, Iranians who came on board that uh, they, they will soon be released, uh, not just exactly know where and or not just know exactly when. The Department of Migrant Workers is hopeful that the four Filipinos will be released soon. They are also coordinating with the Department of Foreign Affairs or DFA which is in contact with the Iranian government regarding the status of the crew members. Dito sa Iran, uh, we don't characterize it as a hostage situation kasi it's the Iranian government with the custody, holding custody over the the four seafarers. So, uh, kaya nga ang, ang sinasagawa ngayon is pag-usap sa Iranian government to, to release them and to send them home. Iran also helping the Philippines secure the release of the 17 crew members who were taken hostage by the Yemen Houthi rebels last year. Meanwhile, the DMW will bring the incident to the International Bargaining Forum to also classify the Strait of Hormuz as a high-risk or warlike zone similar to the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden. This is the second incident this year where a ship with Filipino crew members were detained. On January 11, the oil tanker St. Nicholas with 18 Filipino crew members was also detained but later released. Yeah, and we're forwarding a recommendation as well to the International Bargaining Forum to 
declared the Strait of Hormuz as a, as a high-risk area. When a location is classified as high risk, the salary and benefits of a crew members will double if they agree to sail in the area with threats. However, it is still better to use the right to refuse. Ryan Lacanlale, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Three jeepneys participating in today's transport strike have been impounded by the Land Transportation, Franchising and Regulatory Board or LTFRB. This comes in conjunction with the early conclusion of the protest stage at the Welcome Rotonda in Quezon City on the second day of the transport strike. Jed Neresina will tell us why. The protesting jeepney drivers and policemen argued slightly during the protest earlier at the Welcome Rotonda in Quezon City. These are three jeeps included in the second day of the transport strike who were given a violation ticket due to obstruction. According to one jeepney operator, their group was already leaving the place when there was a tension between them and the Philippine National Police Highway Patrol Group. According to the transport leader, Marval Buena of the Manibela Group, this is an act of oppression against them. Ah, uh, kap kakapalan ng mukha ito. Isipin mo, paalis na kami. Paalis na tayo. Dito pa tayo tinikitan. Hindi naman impoundable yung violation, sir. Eh. Hindi siya impoundable, sir. Obstruction, ayun, sir. Obstruction, may ticket na. Land Transportation, Franchising and Regulatory Board or LTFRB Chairman Teofilo Guadis III explain that in addition to the obstruction, the three jeeps that participated in the transport strike were impounded due to being colorum. Number one, obstruction. Number two, po colorum. Dahil hindi naman nila rota yung Quezon Circle po and then nagdala sila ng pasahero doon. Wala naman silang special permit from LTFRB. So automatic technical colorum ka, which is already a ground para ho ma-impound yung sasakyan. District Director of Quezon City Police District Police Brigadier General Red Maranan also explained the same. Well, unang-una, siyempre yung out of line, yung uh, obstruction, yung pangaharang nila. Titingnan din natin yung mga prangkisa, titingnan natin yung kanilang mga lisensya. Maranan assured that they will cooperate with the Land Transportation Office or LTO and LTFRB regarding the details of those who have been issued tickets. Napicture na naman yung lahat ng mga jeep na sumama, nakuha yung plate number at saka yung mga personalities. Uh, Iimbestigahan natin yan, we will uh, get sufficient evidence and we will file uh, criminal cases against them at yung administrative nature ng kanilang open sa prangkisa, sa lisensya at doon sa jeep mismo will be endorsed to LTO and LTFRB when it comes to franchise. Chairman Guadis added that the said jeepneys will be sent to the impounding area in Terla. Uh, for now po, impound muna sila sa my Quezon City Hall sa headquarters po ng PNP but eventually po they will be surrendered to uh, the uh, LTO po para madala po sa Tarlac sa impounding area. In the end, Transport Group Manibela could not do anything but to follow and according to Valbuena, the group will find a way to redeem the impounded jeepneys. Uh, Pag-iipunan na lang namin ito, ganun talaga. Yung mga... Pang-aabuso, panggigipit na ginagawa po sa atin. The Manibela Group early ended their protest held at the Welcome Rotonda in Quezon City on the second day of their transport strike. According to Manibela Chairman Mar Valbuena, for two days his fellows do not have enough sleep. Therefore, he explained that they also need to rest because he also seen that his companions are tired. D dapat kaninang madaling araw pa kami aalis dahil nakita ko na pagod na yung ating mga kasamahan kaya lang uh, yung ating mga kasamahan ay uh, nakiusap na kung pwede hanggang uh, pagputok ng araw ay uh, nandito nga tayo. At uh, sabi ko nga kailangan din namin magpahinga, kailangan din magpahinga ng aming mga kasamahan. Valbuena did not provide additional details regarding their next step after the said transport strike. Jed Neresina, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God.
and in other global news. The historic criminal trial of a former president of the United States commenced with the selection of prosecutors and defense attorneys for a 12-person jury tasked with hearing the case against Donald Trump brought forth by the people of the state of New York. Accompanied by his legal team, Trump appeared in room 1530 of the Manhattan Criminal Court as proceedings began on Monday, April 15. The day saw debates between both sides on various aspects of the case, including the admissibility of evidence in court and the potential questions for jurors. The jury selection process is expected to last for a week before both sides present their cases. Well, we got a real problem with this judge. We have a real problem with a lot of things having to do with this trial, including the DA, because you go right outside and people are being muffed and killed all day long, and he's sitting here all day with about 10 or 12 prosecutors over nothing. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Maria Letoza, reporting live from Perth, Australia. Good evening. In a significant victory, the Department of Agriculture Food Masters clinched the championship title in Season 10 of UN TV Cup. Adding to their triumph, they were awarded a substantial cash prize of 3 million pesos. This generous amount will be directed towards supporting their chosen beneficiary, the Rosita Soliman Foundation. JP Nunez reports. This tenth season as the Adri celebrates its first UN TV Cup Championship. In a thrilling comeback victory, the Department of Agriculture Food Master secured the championship title in the Season 10 of the UN TV Cup, prevailing against the SSS Kabalikat in their do-or-die match at the Phil Sports Arena last night, April 15. The SSS Kabalika took an early lead with two successful free throws from their forward, Kervin McCoy. But the DA Food Masters quickly responded with a layup by Elijan de Guzman, resulting in an intense exchange of points throughout the first quarter. By the end of the quarter, the DA Food Masters held a narrow lead of four points with the score standing at 25 to 21. The competition intensified as both teams fought fiercely for the championship title, echoed by the fervent cheers of their supporters within the Phil Sports Arena. In the second quarter, the DA Food Masters extended their lead to five points, only to be caught up by the SSS Kabalikat after a 5 to nothing run. However, at halftime, the DA Food Masters maintained their lead with a score of 49 to 46. Entering the third quarter, the DA Food Masters further widened their lead to 17 points, courtesy of a three-point shot by Sherwin Silva. The quarter concluded with the DA Food Masters is still in control, leading with a score of 77 to 60. In the fourth quarter, the DA Food Masters effectively defended their lead, making it difficult for the SSS Kabalika to catch up. With just two minutes remaining in the game, the DA Food Masters secured a 20-point lead, ultimately clinching the victory with a final score of 101 to 80. Sean Ko was hailed as the most valuable player, credited by their head coach as a significant factor in their success throughout Game 2 and Game 3, leading them to the championship title. Actually, hindi ko iniisip yun eh. Naglaro lang talaga ako. Uh, I just played my heart out. Gusto lang talaga namin mag-champion, so hindi ko ina-expect to. Yung pumasa yung Sean Ko, nung Game 2, 28 points. Diba? So, ang laki ng factor the momentum na puta sa amin ng Game 3. The DA Food Masters took home a cash prize of 3 million pesos, which they pledged to support their chosen beneficiary, the Rosita Suleiman Foundation Incorporated. 
Thank you kay Lord God at binigyan kami ng opportunity na makapaglaro sa UNTV. Same time makuha namin sa championship. Lahat to binabalik namin sa kanya. Ito ay talent na pinagkaloob niya. So sinusurrender namin sa kanya. This foundation provides medical assistance to children born with anorectal malformations and conducts feeding programs in various locations. Unang-una sa, di, sa Department of Agriculture, maraming maraming salamat. Napili nyo ang Rosita Solimon Foundation dahil kami po ang inyong beneficiary. Asahan nyo po na gagamitin po namin sa maganda at maraming bagay at, at maraming marami po kaming matutulungan. Meanwhile, the SSS Kabalikat will receive a 2 million pesos cash prize which they will contribute to their chosen beneficiary, the SSS Provident Fund. Sobrang dami ng matutulungan nito at uh, madadagdagan yung tulong. Ang uh, mga beneficiaro ng uh, outreach ng Provident Fund ay yung mga anak uh, at mga seniors na konektado dun sa Provident Fund, sa SSS community. Yan po yung mga anak ng security guards, anak ng janitors, ng utility, anak ng mga personnel. Yung mga hindi ganun matataas ang sweldo ay nabibigyan namin ng scholarship. In his speech, Kuya Daniel Razon, the initiator of the Public Servants League, extended his gratitude to all participants of the UNTV Cup and encouraged them to continue supporting charitable endeavors in future seasons. Ibig po namin na kayo ay anyayahan sa mga darating pang taon. Sana kung paano ninyong sinuportahan ang sampung season ng UNTV Cup Higit pa natin itong maipagpatuloy sa awa po ng Panginoon na sa mahigit limangpung milyong piso na ang naitulong ng UNTV Cup sa mga nangangailangan. He also thanked the members Church of God International for their unwavering support in various charity events aimed at helping those in need. Salamat po sa Panginoon sa patuloy ninyong pagsuporta Mga kapatid, ikinararangal kong kayo'y aking mga kapatid sa pananampalataya. Umaasa po kami na mapatuloy kayong susuporta sa isang mabuting adhikain na ating maipagpatuloy ang paggawa ng kabutihan sa lahat ng ating mga kapwa-tao. J.P. Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And before we close, we will leave you with a word, giving glory to God. From the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 7, it says, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is. And those are the reasons behind the news April 16, 2024. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. Because we need to know. We will always ask why. I'm Harleen Delgado. We serve the people. We give glory to God.